Hello. Today we'll talk about arguments versus other uses of language. We're going to need to be able to distinguish arguments from other uses of language so that when we're reading a passage we can tell, you know, we can tell what's uh, the point of the passage. Is the author trying to give an argument? Is the author merely trying to report some information? It's a really useful skill to have and um, something that we should learn if we're going to learn about arguments. So here's an outline of our lecture. I want to give a review of the class so far, what we've learned through our lectures. I want to talk about arguments and other uses of language. I want to talk about arguments versus explanations. Um, you know, explanations are just another use of language, but um, they deserve special attention because they can be easily confused with arguments. So the main point of this lecture is just to distinguish arguments from other uses of language like reports, beliefs, explanation, explanations, etc. So here's the review. We saw that statements are sentences that are true or false. And it's important to know about statements because arguments are composed of statements. They're made up of statements. Arguments contain premises, which are statements, and a conclusion or conclusions, which are statements as well. Arguments also include an inference claim. This is an explicit or implicit claim that certain statements provide a certain level of logical support for another statement or statements. So words such as therefore indicate a conclusion. Words such as since indicate a premise. Right. So now arguments versus other uses of language. So arguments are to be, to be distinguished from beliefs or opinions, advice, warnings, reports, expositions, illustrations, loosely associated statements, lists of facts, if-then statements, and explanations. So an argument isn't simply a belief. So you might say, I believe that Donald Trump will be the next president on January 20th, 2017. There you haven't given an argument, you've merely given a report of what you think. It might be true, and in fact it is true, that Donald Trump will be president on January 20th. But you haven't given any evidence to suggest that it is true. To give an argument, you would need to sort of support the statement that Donald Trump will be the next president on January 20th. So a belief or an opinion is merely a statement, a statement of, you know, some um, uh, belief, I guess. Yeah, a statement of your, your belief and without uh, providing evidence. Now, of course, beliefs and opinions can serve as portions of arguments. So you can use one of your beliefs, one of your opinions, as a premise or as a conclusion. Um, but just in itself, a belief is not an argument. Advice. So if you give someone advice, you say something like, Hey, you, you shouldn't take out that car loan. Just take that piece of advice, advice right there, that simple piece of advice without any other evidence. Hey, you shouldn't take out that car loan. There you haven't given an argument. Again, you've merely stated one of your beliefs. You shouldn't take out that car loan. Now, if you went on to lay out all the reasons why the person shouldn't take out the car loan, then you might be giving an argument. You shouldn't take out the car loan because of such and such a reason. Now that's an argument. So as just as a belief and an opinion can factor in uh, uh, as part of an argument, so can advice. A warning. Don't touch that. Don't touch that. That's not an argument. It's not even a statement. Don't touch that. That's incapable of being true or false. 
it's basically issuing a command. Now, commands, or I mean, sorry, warnings, um, can come in the form of a statement. I wouldn't do that if I were you. That's That can be sort of a warning. But here again, you know, we've only given a single statement. And that's the reason why beliefs, opinions, advice, and warnings aren't arguments, because they're single statements. And there's no sort of inferential relationship uh, taking place, you know, between something that we would call the premise, something that we would call the conclusion. Reports. Reports are not arguments. On November the 23rd, uh, 1988, such and such a person was killed in a uh, house fire, etc., etc. You're not giving an argument there. You're just stating a matter of fact. Um, you're stating something that happened. So a report is different from an argument as well. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to go through all of these um, examples. I think you get the idea. But know that there are all these other uses of language apart from argument. Now, the final two if-then statements and explanations I'll go into a little bit more detail on. So, if-then statements. If-then statements can be used in arguments, though then on their own, they're not arguments. So, here's an if-then statement. If, statement. If God does not exist, then everything is permitted. That's a paraphrase of... Um, of something Dostoevsky said. If God does not exist, then everything is permitted. That's not an argument. It's merely a statement. It's merely a, a statement of belief or opinion. However, it can be used in an argument. And the example I have here uh, uses that if-then statement in an argument. If God does not exist, then everything is permitted. Not everything is permitted. Therefore, God exists. And that's actually a good argument in one respect. It's good in that, has, it, it's good in that it, it has a good form. The form is flawless, which means if the premises are true, the conclusion must be true. Okay? But then you have to ask... Are the premises true? And that's another matter that we won't get into. But just know that an if-then statement on its own is just another statement. It would need to have more... It would need to have other supporting statements in order to qualify as an argument. It would need to have a, a statement um, that is supposed to follow from the other statements. Namely, the conclusion. So, there's much, much more to come on if-then statements. They will um, factor into the class um, quite a bit. So, some practice problems. See if you can distinguish arguments from other uses of language. If you run for office on that platform, you will not be a very popular candidate. Is this an argument? No. It's simply an if-then statement. It can be used in an argument, but in itself, it's not an argument. How about this one? Since abortion kills a fetus and fetuses are innocent persons, abortion kills an innocent person. Since it's morally wrong to kill innocent persons, abortion is morally wrong. Is this an argument? Yes. The conclusion is that abortion is morally wrong. The supporting sentences or statements are, for example, that abortion kills a fetus and fetuses are innocent persons. And actually what we have here is a very complex argument. It's an argument within an argument. So if you can see that first sentence actually is an argument itself. Since abortion kills a fetus and fetuses are innocent persons, abortion kills an innocent person. So there, 
the conclusion is that abortion kills an innocent person. The premises are that abortion kills a fetus and fetuses are innocent persons. However, the argument goes on. Since it's morally wrong to kill innocent persons, abortion is morally wrong. So now new evidence is brought in, um, and that new evidence along with abortion kills an innocent person, from those two things it's supposed to follow that abortion is morally wrong. Now, this is a good argument in one respect, that it has good form. That is, if the premises are true, the conclusion must be true. Now, are the premises true? Well, that's another matter. And you might be thinking, if you answered that this wasn't an argument, you might be thinking, well, it's not an argument because, like, the person just gave her opinion or gave his opinion. That's true. Definitely this person did give their opinion. But of any opinion, you can ask, is the opinion true or is the opinion false? Is the opinion true or is it false? And this is why opinions can be part of arguments because they are capable of being true or false and thus opinions are statements. So, simply because someone is giving their opinion, it doesn't mean they're not giving a good argument. How about this one? All true wisdom is found on t-shirts. I wear t-shirts, so I must be wise. Is this an argument? Yes, I must be wise is the conclusion. The rest, that's the supporting evidence. Now, there's a difference between a good argument and a bad argument. This certainly is an argument, but it may not be a very good one. How about this? Violence and lawlessness spread across London. Property and vehicles have been set, set on fire in several areas, some burning out of control. One reporter pointed out that in Clapham, where the shopping area had been picked clean, the only shop left unlooted and untouched was the bookshop. Is this an argument? No. This is a report. There is no statement that is supposed to logically follow from the other statements. It's simply a string of statements meant to convey information. Now, arguments versus explanations. Explanations are given to provide the why or the how of something. The thing being explained in an explanation is typically an accepted fact. For example, your back injury occurred because you lifted weights without first getting a physical checkup. This is an explanation. Take the claim your back injury occurred. That's an accepted fact. So. Bob and Jane, they're talking, you know, Bob didn't get a physical checkup and he did some, I don't know, some squats or something and injured his back. And Jane says, your back injury occurred because you lifted weights without first getting a physical checkup. So Bob and Jane both know that the back injury did occur. That's not in dispute. The question is, why did it occur? How did it occur? Okay, so what Jane is saying is the explanation for the accepted fact that you injured your back is that you lifted weights without first getting a physical checkup. In, by contrast, arguments are given to provide evidence in support of a conclusion. The conclusion is typically not an accepted fact. For example, because you started lifting weights without first getting a physical checkup, you will probably injure your back. Suppose that Bob and Jane are married, and Bob says, Jane, I think I'm going to go to the gym with the young guys. I think I'm going to go do some squats. And Jane says, Bob, you haven't gotten a physical checkup. You shouldn't do that. So Bob says, forget you, I'm going to, going to do some squats. I'm going to lift weights with the young guys. 
So he does. And when he comes back, Jane says, You know, I've been thinking about this. Because you started lifting weights without first getting a physical checkup, you probably are going to injure your back. All right. So, this is an argument. The premise is that you started living, lifting weights without first getting a physical checkup. This in itself is an accepted fact. Bob and Jane agree on that. Where they disagree is the outcome. Bob thinks he's going to have a six-pack six pack abs or something. Jane thinks that Bob is going to go to the hospital. All right? So, she's offering evidence for a particular claim. The evidence being that you started lifting weights without first getting a physical checkup. The claim that's supposed to follow is that you will injure your back. Now, you can see some indicator words here that will show you that it's an argument. The word probably. Probably shows that it's not an accepted fact that you will injure your back. All right. So, with an argument, you have premises that are typically accepted as fact. And the premises are claimed to support a conclusion, which is uh, not typically accepted as fact. With an explanation, you have the explanants, that is, the, the stuff doing the explaining. And that's claimed to shed light on an accepted fact, the explanandum, that is, the thing being explained. So, here's another way to look at it. An argument answers the question, why believe this? An explanation answers the question, how does this happen? Why is this the case? With an argument, the conclusion is typically not already accepted as fact. But the premises that are meant to establish the conclusion usually are. With an explanation, the thing to explain is typically already accepted as fact, but the statements that do the explaining may not be. So there you go. There's a difference between an argument and an explanation. Here are some more examples of explanations. Jack fell to his knees. He was exhausted by the loss of blood from the wound on his side. That Jack fell to his knees is the accepted fact in this case. And the explanation is that he was exhausted by the loss of blood from the wound on his side. Here's another example. Golf balls have a dimpled surface because the dimples reduce air drag, causing the ball to travel farther. The accepted fact here is that golf balls have a dimpled surface. The thing, the explanation of that is that this reduces air drag. All right, let's see if you've got this down. Here's our first example. The sky appears blue from the Earth's surface because light rays from the sun are scattered by particles in the atmosphere. Is this an argument or an explanation? Why? It's an explanation. That the sky appears blue is explained by the phrase following because. And that the sky appears blue is an accepted fact. Because you committed that heinous crime, it is clear that you are an immoral person. Is this an argument or an explanation? Why? An argument. You committed that heinous crime. That's a premise, and it serves as evidence for the claim that you are an immoral person. That the person is immoral, it may or may not be an accepted fact. But it's clear in this case that it's the thing that's meant to follow from the fact that he committed the heinous crime. All right, let's review what we've gone over. We've seen that arguments are just one of many ways to use language. We need to be able to distinguish arguments from these other uses of language if we're going to be fluent in identifying arguments in passages.
and, in particular, it's difficult to distinguish between arguments and explanations. A rule of thumb for making the distinction is this. In an argument, the conclusion is typically not an accepted fact, while the premises are. In an explanation, the thing being explained is typically an accepted fact. That's all I have for today.